Hey y'all, welcome to my channel or welcome back. If you are new here, thank you so much for joining us. I hope that you will think about subscribing. Also hitting that notification bell, that way you'll know each time I upload a new video. Um, also, whether you're subscribed or not, please check me out on Instagram. It's blessed.beyond.measure.crafts. That, we got some really cool stuff going on over there, so definitely check that out. Um, so if you are returning, I just wanna say thank you like from the bottom of my heart, thank you for real. The fact that I've got so many women like supporting me, I mean, probably men too, but I mostly, I'm talking about like the comments. Um, I mostly see it's mostly women, but the fact that I've got women supporting me is absolutely fantastic. Today, you don't see women supporting women. I mean, typically we judge ourselves based off of another woman. That's just what we do, you know? So having all of these women y'all supporting me and like encouraging me and telling me to keep going is it is so fantastic it feels so good to know that i've got so much support behind me like i am dead serious thank you thank you thank you okay enough of all that y'all gonna make me cry lord have mercy anyways <laughs> all right so today's video is a farmhouse coffee bar Yes, I'm excited. I've never had a coffee bar, so this is going to be something a little different for me. Um, I, I'm going all farmhouse. Like, this is the second video of a three-part little deal that I'm doing. I will try to link the first video in the description box below. If you haven't seen that, go check that out. It's about the kitchen sink, and it, I think it turned out fantastic. All right, so today's video, the coffee bar. Got a couple different DIYs. I'm actually using some stuff from the Dollar Tree, the Dollar General Store, and also um, some thrifted items. So that's going to be fun. I can't wait for y'all to see all of that. Um, if y'all like this video, be sure and give it a thumbs up. Y'all definitely leave the comments. I love them. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. They are they are fantastic. All right. So other than that, I think that's all. And let's get right into the video. All right, y'all. So for this first DIY, I've got a bowl here that I got from the Dollar General store. I also have a plate that came from the Dollar General. I have a candlestick that came from the Dollar Tree and a knob that I got from a best friend of mine. All right. So I'm just going to be painting the bottom of this black. I want the bottom and the sides black. Now that's black chalk paint that I got from the Dollar General store also. And I also get my brushes from the Dollar General store. So um, I'm just painting the outside of this black. I don't want any paint to touch the inside of it. That way, just in case I do decide to do something with it, like put food on it of some sort, then I don't have to worry about there's been any paint near that. So I'm just painting the bottom and the outside of that plate. Now, I'm fixing to show y'all something that I had done in a previous DIY and never finished. This picture here is gorgeous. Is it not? Oh my gosh. So there it is, <laughs> finished. I didn't show y'all that before in the last DIY. All right, so this bowl here, I cracked it actually, taking the sticker off with the uh, blow dryer. Yeah, so I'm gonna take this lid here that came from a set of canisters or something like that. And I'm just going to super glue it straight to the top of that. Not only does it give it like a little bit more of a refined look, but it also is going to hide where that busted at. So be careful doing the blow dryer thing. Totally think it works. I showed it in my last video. I think it's awesome. But as you see here, you can damage stuff with the blow dryer situation. All right. So got that uh, glued on. Now I'm going to take my super glue and my hot glue, and I'm going to glue this candlestick to the bottom of this this uh, plate here. Now, I used the, the super glue this time instead of my Loctite just because it was already right there. I already had it in my hand, so I just went ahead and used it. No big deal. But typically, I'll use my uh, super grab or something like that, I think it's called. <laughs> Anyways, it's made by Loctite, and that's usually what I use, but I, I decided to do the super glue this time. All right, so I'm also going to take that super glue and I'm going to glue this knob on. And I also painted this little knob uh, black with my black uh, chalk paint. This turns out so stinking cute. And look at how easy this was to do. Literally like maybe three steps and boom, you're done. Look how cute. I added that buffalo check ribbon and it just set it off. I love this little cake stand. That... Uh, 
the bowls and the cups and the pitcher that y'all have seen me use on here, spray painting it white, it just looks so good. Like, the videos and the pictures don't do it justice because it's so stinking cute. All right, so let's jump right into the next one. This here I got for $2.99 at the Goodwill. It's just a tray. It is actually a Southern Living at Home with Gail Pittman or something like that. So I'm pretty sure this was a fairly expensive tray at one time. So I'm actually going to be painting the Buffalo Check on this tray. So I clean it really good with alcohol. Make sure it's good and clean and dry. All right, I am first going to go in with my chalk paint. And what I did wrong here is I should have first, I should have Mod Podged it. Started off, right off the bat, I messed this up. But in the end, it, it, it comes all together. But I made it harder on myself is what I did. So for sure, use the Mod Podge first before you do so. Now, I went ahead and painted this entire thing, but I wanted a little bit of the red edge to show. So, I took a baby wipe and went right around the edge, just just a just a tiny bit of it. I just wanted that red to kind of make the, the buffalo check pop. So, that's why I'm going around the edges there. See, just a little little bit of the edge there I wanted to show. All right. So, I decide then that I'm going to Mod Podge my white paint right over the top of that, just so maybe it will help keep my uh, tape from sticking to my paint when I go to, to put my lines in for the buffalo check. All right, so I've got my frog green tape. I really like this tape. It works really good. All right, I just start taping off lines. I'm going to take another piece and use as my, kind of as my guide to keep my lines straight and also to um, keep the distance between them even. So I just put that guide piece up there and then put down my second piece. Pull off your guide. Keep on going. So I do this all the way down the uh, plate. We got the vertical lines first and then we'll do the horizontal lines after that. This was a fun little project, but it really did like turn into, I thought it was going to be a disaster really. All right. So I've got the silver lining chalk paint that I'm going to mix with a little bit of black. I just wanted it a little darker than what the silver lining is. So that's why I did the, the black in there with it just to darken it up just a hair. All right. So my vertical lines, I'm just going to go in with my gray. And now I went ahead and painted all the way up to the edge because I also take a baby wipe and wipe it right back off to make sure that I keep that, that red edge showing. But I'm just going to paint this all the way down. I love this though. Once it turned out, once I got it finally done and it was, it worked out in the end, I love this. It's probably one of my favorite pieces in my kitchen right now. I absolutely love this. There I am with the baby wipe again. See, I just kept as soon as I got done painting, I would take it and just go right around the edge real quick. So I'm going to peel my paint, my uh, tape off. And this worked out pretty good. Now the Mod Podge did help, but I did not Mod Podge it in between each coat. So like what I'm saying is I didn't Mod Podge these gray stripes and I should have, I guess. I don't know. Or maybe I should have let my paint dry a little longer. That's possible too, but... I end up peeling up paint with my tape in the end and I have to go back and fix it. So anyways, now I'm going to put down my horizontal lines. Doing it exactly the same way as I did the other one. I take that guide piece of tape, lay it down, keep my lines straight, keep my distance between them straight. That guide piece is so important. Once I get it taped, I'm going to go back in with that same gray paint. Your, ver your first set of vertical lines and your first set of horizontal lines are the same color. You're going to go in with the same, that I call it like the medium color. The white was your lightest and then your medium and then you're going to do your darkest last, the black. Like I said, this was a 
fun project, but I just, I should have done it a little different. Y'all be sure and let me know in the comments if you have suggestions on that where to keep the tape from actually peeling up the paint that you've just painted. Y'all leave me some comments and let me know if y'all have any suggestions on that because I really don't know that much about painting tricks and tips. That's, that's not my forte. So, but I, I wanted to try the buffalo check. All right. So once I got those lines on, I'm going to go back, put more of the vertical lines on, and then in each lighter spot is where I'm going to paint my black. You can actually see the video. You can't see it so well, but when you're looking directly at it, you can see where the lighter spots are and that's where you're going to paint just right over the top of them. Now is the final results. I was so excited to peel this tape off and then y'all just wait for it. <laughs> oh my gracious. Partly it looks great. Okay. Like I will have to say for my very first attempt at Buffalo check, some of it turned out great. Some of it did not look at where all the paint chips off. It didn't chip off it. I pulled it off with that tape. So I just went back in with a very fine, um, well now my gray, I was using a different kind of brush, but for the black and the white where I was fixing it, I just went in with a really fine square tipped, uh, as you see there, brushes. So I could try and keep that square just as, as straight as it could be. And these brushes come in a pack just like this and they come from the Dollar General store. See there, I'm just barely going at it, but I'm just making sure that I, I wanted to straighten all my lines out. I had worked way too hard at this to leave it at what it was before. And there it is. So it wasn't just hard, but I made it harder on myself by not doing the Mod Podge, I think, in between coats. I'm not sure what I should have done, but I love it. Definitely my favorite. I did Mod Podge it and the end. I Mod Podge over the top of all of this though, just to make sure it doesn't come off again. All right, so for this next one, we're going to be using this hanger that I got from the Dollar Tree and then also this sign here. And I got it from um, the Dollar General store, maybe last year or something like that. So I, I was ready to do something different with it anyways because it just wasn't the colors that I was wanting to use. So I painted it solid white with my chalk paint. And then I'm going to go in and just dry brush uh, with that silver lining. It's the Waverly Silver Lining. So I'm going along the edges and I just wipe it off in a paper towel as I go to keep from having much on my brush. I don't want a lot on my brush. And I start off going around all the edges. And then you'll see here in a minute, I'm just gonna go all the way across each one. And I'm also going to go down where the lines would normally be for each piece of wood, like each board. just right across it real easy see there how i'm making the lines you can just barely see that they're there but you, you you can tell that these are separate pieces of wood i love the way this turned out the key to that dry brushing is honestly to just not have much paint on your brush but something like this you know what paint it the way you want to paint it Definitely do it your way. That's the way I kind of see it when it comes to distressing or doing the weathered look. You know what? Just paint it and whatever it turns out, however you like it and you want it to look, by George, then leave it that away and enjoy it. <laughs> That's the way I see it. Just enjoy your piece and know that you made it and paint it however you want to. I really like the way this turned out. All right, so I don't know where the footage went of me actually putting those stickers on, but those are stickers that I got from Walmart. They're individual letters, and I just stuck those on there spelling out coffee, and then I took some Mod Podge and went right over the top of each of my letters just to seal those letters in on there. And as you see there, that when I distressed with the black, I went in pretty heavy with it. All right, I'm going to take my diamond uh, brand fingernail file and actually 
distress the edges of this board. I use the fingernail file because it's so much easier. I just can't hold on to sandpaper very well. I don't know what it is about sandpaper, but me and it just don't get along. So I uh, almost on accident, kind of whatever, however you want to say it, discovered that the fingernail file is absolutely the perfect thing for distressing. All right, so once I get that done the way I want it, I'm just going over it with a baby wipe just to get off any excess, like the powdery stuff. And then I took my silver lining very lightly and dry brushed over the letters. They just looked too shiny for me. I thought that maybe that Mod Podge would dull them down some, but it didn't. See, it's just barely, barely dry brushed over the top of them just to distress the letters a little. I'm not even getting paint out of the bottle, as you see there. I'm just using what was left in the lid. So it's very, very little paint. Now this next part, we are MacGyvering this, okay? So I could not figure out how I was going to attach this thing to the uh, hanging deal. So I got these little bitty, I got them out of that. They're like picture hangers, something. I don't know what they're called. I have no idea, but they came out of that pack and that pack of um, picture hanging tools, whatever hooks came from the Dollar General store. So I'm just going to take the ends of this uh, hanger off. The part that goes like is supposed to go over the door. I just pop those right off. I thought I was going to have to cut them off. And then I realized that I could just pop them back and forth and it would pop right off. See, I wanted to sit right there at the bottom edge of that, that last uh, board there. So I just take these little dudes, screw them in on the bottom of that board. So that I will have something to hook my um, lock ties with. See, I'm just gonna thread that through right there. I'm making sure that I had it on the right way. <gasps> oh my gosh, okay, so I don't tighten it all the way up until I get the rest of them on. Now, I do go ahead and pull it down, you know, but just I don't tighten it completely until I get the rest of them on. That way I, I can keep the, the hanger straight. All right, now once I get it right where I want it, I'm gonna tighten these up. And then just snip off the ends. And now we have our hanger. I love it. Worked out perfect. I just wanted something where I could put my coffee mugs. And this worked out perfect. I'm not going to be hanging coats or hats on it. It's just strictly for coffee mugs. So once I got that done, I had to decide how I was going to actually hang this on the wall. Well, the um, hardware that you see there that I'm taking off, it was kind of in the way as far as like hanging it, it kind of made it stick out. So I took all of that off. Then I took from that package that I got those little twisty things. I don't know what they're called. I'm sorry. But from that same package, they had the sawtooth hangers and I just took those and nailed them in. Now those nails are absolutely so tea tiny. They're so hard to hold. As you see there, I'm kind of having trouble like holding on to it to try to nail it. So I thought, you know what? I saw this on TikTok. I'm totally fixing to try it. You take a comb, small toothed comb, put the nail in it, and boom, literally screw it right in, or nail it right in, should I say. You don't even have to hold on to it. The, the comb actually holds it up, so that's pretty cool. All right, and there she is. I love this. so cute i got those coffee mugs for like 2.99 for four of them at the goodwill oh yes i did i hit the jackpot with that they are so stinking pretty i love this love it uh all righty so for this next one this is so super simple i've got my ivory paint by waverly i've also got my mod podge i have a um print that my friend made for me and then I have this um, 
for a dollar at the Dollar General store, it is a mason jar cutout. So I'm just going to paint the front of it with my ivory paint and I ended up giving it two coats. And now my friend printed that the word creamer out for me on her. I don't actually own a printer, so she did that for me. Um, I've got the, my Burnt Umber paint by App Apple Barrel. Now I'm just ripping. I just literally want it to look like it's been ripped off. So I'm just ripping right around the word. And then I'm going to dip it down in this Burnt Umber. I wanted it to look aged, and I wasn't sure just exactly how, how I wanted to do it. I was going to burn the edges at first, and then I was like, man, maybe I shouldn't do that because I'll probably end up burning the whole word. <laughs> so, I decided I would dip it in this watered-down paint and just see if it would still give me the same kind of effect. And it did. It, it worked out perfect. It's actually exactly the way that I wanted it to look. So, while it was still wet with the, the uh, paint, I just kind of lay it over to the side. I'm going to add my Mod Podge to my mason jar. And then I'm going to go ahead and stick this uh, paper on there. Even though it's wet, no big deal. It's all going to dry at the same time. It's not. It doesn't hurt anything. So I just go ahead and stick it straight down, smooth it out a little bit. I'm going to add a little Mod Podge to the top of it. Just be careful with it because the paper will tear easier you know since it's wet i just add a little mod podge to the top and this dude's done i'm gonna end up adding some buffalo check ribbon just to top it off but i think this was so easy this literally took like five minutes no joke other than the paint drying it might have taken five minutes so cute it only cost me a dollar so cute all right, so I just take my ribbon. I wanted it to look like it was tied around the, the mason jar, so I'm just placing it around the front and then hot gluing the sides down. And then I'm going to, yeah, hot glue just a little there to make that lay down. And I'm just going to tie me like a little shoestring tie bow, I mean, just a little shoestring bow, and that's all I did. Hot glued that dude on, and we were ready to go. Well, if I ever get the bow tied here, ladies and gentlemen, hang on. It's got to be just right. <laughs> Y'all know how I am. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> oh. I'm going to uh, dovetail the ends there of it, and then that's all I did to it. Hot glued it right on. And there we have it. I love this. I love the way the paper turned out. I just love it. I think it is perfect. It's just something to add to the, the collection, you know. Just a little something extra. Farmhouse. It is definitely farmhouse. I love it. All right, so for this next one, this is a neat little little deal. So I have got this, uh, those paint sticks came from Walmart. They're three in a pack for like a dollar and 12 cents, I think. Then I have got my black uh, paint from the Dollar General store. And then this little, whatever you want to call this, uh, cabinet divider thing, whatever it is. I think it's for spices actually. But this I came from the Dollar, Gen the dollar Tree the little tray did. All right, so I'm just taking these paint sticks and I'm measuring them off at each step on this, on the little, uh, th yeah. All right, so that is my miter box that I got from Amazon. I will try to have a link in the description box for it. It works out so well. You just put your paint stick in there find a little, I mean, it's got a place where you can keep a straight line as you're cutting. You can cut ver, uh, like horizontal line, or what am I trying to say? Like um, with the angle, you can cut those, those type lines. I don't know what that's called, <laughs> but anyways. All right. So once I got them cut to the size I wanted, I'm just taking my black stain. Now I added water to the the that bottle there i actually added water directly to the bottle it was at the end of the paint and i just wanted to make some stain that i could keep so 
that just that's why I poured it out of there. It's already got the water added to it. All right, so they didn't turn out just as dark as I wanted them to. I have used this stain a hundred times now, and I love the way it looks. But on these paint sticks, for some reason, it just did not darken up the way that I wanted it to. So I took some black paint and just dry brushed over the stain just to give it a little bit, little bit darker dimension to it. That's what I was going for, a little bit darker. All right, so once I had that done, I am taking each uh, little step here, adding the hot glue, and then I am taking pieces of canvas that I have cut out from an old canvas and just laying that right over the top of the hot glue and actually squishing it down in between each, uh, each wire there. I just felt like this was the best way to hold the, these on and, and make it look um, more tailored, I guess you'd say. And we're gonna paint that, so don't worry. It doesn't look like this in the end, I promise. And this is where we're gonna actually sit all of our um, cups for the Keurig. Really cute, it turns out really, really cute. All right, so I take my black paint and go back in and paint all of that canvas. Hot glue, canvas, you name it, I painted all of it black. That way that you would not be able to see it at all. See there, I'm just going right over the top of the canvas and the hot glue, just all of it. And I like that black chalk paint from the Dollar General store. I think it works really good. I think it's actually chalkboard paint, not chalk paint. Let me correct myself. But either way, it cover the coverage is great on it, and I like it. All right, so I'm going to take this rooster that I got for $1. It is a garden steak from the Dollar General store. We are going to take the stick off of it. Just pops right off. Now, I tried to get that black piece out, but I couldn't. It was it was like welded on. So I just said, to heck with it. We'll leave that. It ain't hurting nothing. <laughs> All right. I'm going to take the ends of that that was, that was wound around that stake and bend them down over the wires on this little stand. And I'm just using my little clipper things there to bend the wire. But you could use your fingers. It's not, it wasn't like it was that hard or anything. And there we have it. That simple. I ended up adding some hot glue just to make sure that the rooster stayed where she was supposed to. She, I said she. <laughs> where he was supposed to. Roosters are a he, right? <laughs> oh my gracious. All right, we got it in place. And there it is. I love this. This was so easy, too. So simple. This did not take long at all. And it turned out so cute. Really a good piece to go with this collection. Definitely. I just love this. I think it is so cute. All right. So for this next one here, this is going to be a thrift store flip. Also, Dollar Tree... Uh, little canister deals. So I took all of that out, spray painted it. I actually took the hardware off of this one so that I could spray paint the entire thing. And I end up spray painting the uh, picture itself wh white with white spray paint, but then I spray all the hardware and the handle uh, with some flat black spray paint. All right, so these, I come back in and I'm like, nah, okay. The spray paint covered good, but it looks like they've been spray painted and I wanted them to look chalky. So I'm going to take my chalk paint. Now I'm showing you here these little cups. I bought these to put extra paint and stuff in, but look at them. When you try to put the lid on, they just squish down to nothing. So don't, don't get those. They came from the Dollar General store and they are not worth a dollar. So... I'm going to take my um, chalk paint here, and I'm showing y'all this just to show you what the consistency is of it. I have had so many of y'all ask me how I make my chalk paint, and I use a 16-ounce thing of paint along with this size. I think it is an 8-ounce, 4-ounce, or 8-ounce. Let me, let me look to be sure. Um, of the baby powder...
that's four ounces of the baby powder. So four ounces of the baby powder with 16 ounces of paint. And it is just a little less than four ounces is what I use. I still had just a little bit of um, baby powder in there when I was done mixing it. But now I just mixed it to the consistency that I wanted it to be. I didn't really measure it out. I didn't do any of that. I just literally kept mixing and adding a little at a time until I got it to the consist consistency that I wanted. So that's how I make my chalk paint. All right, so once I got those painted, now I went over them with the chalk paint because I did not like the way that the spray paint looked. I wanted them to have that chalky finish. So that's why I went over everything with the chalk paint. And then I'm taking my fingernail file once again, and I'm just gonna go around and distress this. Just all around the edges, add a couple scuffs here and there. Works out perfect. That fingernail file, I'm telling y'all, it is like the best. They're great for your fingers too, but it's like definitely made for distressing stuff. And they come from the Dollar Tree. All right, so once I get that done, I go to put the hardware back on this and I have lost the screw <sighs> that goes in it. So, of course, something has to happen every time I do something, y'all, <laughs> every time. So, I just took one of them Loctite deals and I just put her on there. Tightened that dude up and called it a day. Whatever, it's on. You will never see that. Nobody will ever notice it. So, there you go. We're back together. All right. Now, I wanted to uh, distress my handle and the, the little metal piece that went around this picture. Just a little bit. I wanted it to look like kind of rusted, galvanized metal underneath that black. So what I did was take um, my silver, it is metallic silver made by folk art. And I also took burnt umber made by um, apple barrel. And I just sponged it on in different places all around, all around the handle, especially up the sides and around the hardware. This is cute. Just to go with this this little collection that I've got going on, I love it. It's so different looking. I mean, it's just an old, it's not that old either, but it's just an older coffee pitcher, and I love it. I love it. I think it looks so cute. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing with these lids that go are going to go with the, the little canister set. I'm just going to scuff them up with my fingernail file. Now, when I did that, it was showing shiny metal, obviously, because that's what's underneath it. So, I'm going to actually do the same painting technique on this as I did on the uh, picture. And hopefully, you all be able to see it a little better with this. So, see there, I've got my Folk Art Metallic and then my Burnt Umber by Apple Barrel. I've got two sponges, sponge brushes. And what I do is just pull them off the end of that stick the sponge brush. I just pull it right off the end. And I usually use ones that are, have gotten a little older and I've used them a couple times and it's time, just about time to chunk it. Those are the ones that I pull apart. I, I typically don't do a brand new one that way, but anyways, so I'm just taking my silver and I'm barely getting any on it. And I'm going to go right over every single spot that I had scuffed up. I want to cover that shiny metal with, with my uh, metallic because it's a little more dull. See how it lo just looks a little, it looks, it does. It, do it just looks older than, than the fresh metal. So once I get that done, I'm showing you here, it's very, very little of that burnt umber. And this is just to give it a rusted look. It's very, very little of it though. You just barely put any on the tip of your brush. Very little. And kind of dab it in different places. Once you get the up close of this, the picture, you'll really be able to see it. All right, so I took the canisters while the lids were drying, and I got this printout, printout uh, my friend made for me, and it's the Ray Dunn font, and it's just got different words on it. So I'm writing sugar on one of these. 
I started to do it with the marker, and then I was like, eh, I better do it with the pencil first. That way I can erase and start over. And it's really hard to copy this Ray Dunn. You would think, like, okay, you just slap it on because it's, you know, just, it's so simple. How could it be hard? Well, recreating someone else's handwriting is, is just hard. It just is. For me, it is anyways. Because I want it to look exactly the same. So, I'm a, I'm, I'm a, um hard critic on myself. So I wrote sugar on one and spice on the other. Girls are made of sugar and spice and everything nice, right? <laughs> That's why I did it. I ended up turning around and writing latte and there you have them. So cute. I love the way the lids turned out. I think they look really good. Really, really cute. I could have gone over the lettering one more time with my marker, but my marker, it just pooed out on me. So I wasn't able to go back over the lettering. All right. Super easy DIY here, y'all. Got to be like literally the simplest one possible. All right. I've got my carbon paper that I ordered on Amazon. I've got a printout that says coffee bar and I have a uh, canvas from the Dollar Tree. It's an eight by 10 canvas. I take my uh, carbon paper, lay it down. I'm going to take my printout, lay that right over the top of it. And then this carbon paper comes with these little special tools. And you just go right over the top of your word. I literally just trace it out exactly the way it is on the paper. So simple, y'all. This is so simple. And that's also the Ray Dunn font. I just love it, y'all. I love the Ray Dunn. I think it is so pretty. She does a really good job. <laughs> y'all, when I first started doing the Ray Dunn stuff, I thought it was a dude. I did. I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe I'm like the only person in the world that did not know that Ray Dunn was a woman. So proud to know that it's a lady. I think that's fantastic. And I support her fully. I think she's got some awesome looking stuff. But I do apologize for um, saying a him the last time I was talking about it. All right. So I just copied right over the top of that with my marker. I'm going to take some of that uh, silver lining and just go right over this canvas. All we're doing is distressing the canvas a little bit. And this is done. This was so simple. Y'all, I literally copied it from the carbon paper, pulled that off, went over it with a magic marker, took my brush, distressed it a little bit with the silver lining and a little bit of black. Now, when I go over it with the black, I'm really focusing around the edges because I want the wood from the canvas to kind of show up, like where that canvas, where the frame is around this canvas. I want that to really show up. And as you hit it with that brush, do you see there? It's, yeah. You can see it showing up. So I really focused on the edges a lot when I was going in with my black. And I think it turned out super cute and it is simple, so easy to do, and it literally cost me a dollar. A bunch of these DIYs cost me a dollar. So stinking cute. And there you have it. I love this. I love the way the black really framed it out. I love that it's the Ray Dunn font. I just love it. I love everything about this little sign. So simple and so cute. All right, y'all. So for this last one, we're going to be making a um, beaded garland with the tassel. And the reason I'm showing y'all how to make this is because I, I'm not sure if I've showed on my videos ever before how to make a, a tassel. And yes, I have because I did the buffalo check. But this one, I did three different yarns. And I was just kind of wanting to show y'all how I did it. So that's why I'm, I'm showing this on my video today. All right. So I took my yarn, took some scotch tape, just wrapped it around the end there. And I'm doing that so that I can pull those, um, pull it through the beads. 
give myself something to pull it through. So I just wrap it around my miter box. <laughs> that was the only thing I had close that was about the size I wanted. So I've got black red i bought that red yarn ain't it beautiful i bought that at walmart for like two bucks yeah so i wrap it around there i'm gonna tie a little a little bow i don't even tie a knot and that's literally just to keep it together just long enough for me to get the tassel part tied so i'm gonna go around it and at the very top of it at the tip of it i'm going to tie a knot a double knot and that's going to create like the tassel look I love these bulky, the big bulky uh, tassels. I think they're so cute. It's almost like a pom-pom, but it's a tassel. So it's kind of like if a tassel and a pom-pom had a baby, you have a bulky tassel. <laughs> that was so totally stupid. But anyways, that's what I'm trying to say. It literally, it's a big bulky tassel and I love them. I think they're as cute as they can be. And yeah, mine's a little different than everybody else's, but that's okay. I want it to be my way and that's what we get. So once I get that tied, as you see, I tied a knot at the top. I also cut it in order to make the bottom of the tassel. You got your tassel made. Now we're going to take the beads and just string them right on. I think I did about 12 beads for this. Now, I tied me a little sign on there that I'm actually going to write uh, sweets on. I'm just trimming up my tassels. You want to trim those down. I'm going to tie off the end there. I'm just tying a double knot and that's why, you know, so that the beads don't come off the other end. And I think this turned out so cute. I love it. I love the beaded garland anyways. I think that's such a cute um, style that, that's going on right now. So I think this turned out really cute. I just wrote sweets on it. Now the first time I wrote it, look here. Did not write it with a pencil. Started straight out with my uh, chalk and boom. Look at that. That's terrible. That is terrible, y'all. That did not work out so well. So I just snip it off and start over. Grabbed me another one. This time I start out with the pencil and write the word on there before I start out with the chalk paint that or chalk pen. That way I know it's going to fit. But you know what? Like literally in crafting, crap happens. Okay. So you just roll with it. It's kind of like life. It Crap happens. You just, you just keep on trucking. Okay. It, it'll all work out in the end. And there it is. So cute. All right. And this is the collection all together. I hope y'all have enjoyed it. I hope that y'all liked everything. If there's something that you liked in particular, please leave it in the comments. Let me know what was your favorite. Y'all, please give this video a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, I would love for you to do so. I love this, y'all. I'm so excited about having my own coffee bar. So stinking cute. Love it. Everything turned out so stinking cute. It all goes together so well, too. My coffee sign with my hangers on it. I love it. I love it. Just really cute. It really came together. I hope y'all enjoyed it. And just a couple more pictures. I love this. I love that buffalo check tray. That is probably my favorite. So be sure and let me know in the comments what your favorite was. All right, y'all. Please have a blessed day. Y'all check me out on Instagram and we'll see you next time.